two, one. Hey, Shagheads, Curtis Tucker here with a Shaggy Duck Live, AKA Shags. It has been a while since I've gotten an episode out. It has been crazy busy and school, uh, college has started, got the girls in college, football season has started. And so we are back to that every other weekend between Norman and Fayetteville watching the girls palm at their uh, football games. And so things have gotten a little crazy, but I wanted to get in here and get another episode to follow the uh, journal of what's going on at Shaggy Duck Studio here in the middle of the Great Plains of Oklahoma in Enid. And uh, found a little topic that I thought I would talk to you guys about, something that's actually a big part of what I do every day, and I haven't really talked about it before. So I thought, well, this will make a really good episode. So I'm going to talk about that today. Appreciate all you guys uh, out there listening. Uh, I can see that you guys are listening to the episodes. Please give me a little bit of feedback. Let me know if there are some topics or some things or a specific type of podcast that you guys would like to listen to. Maybe I can uh, tailor this one to that or include some of that information on some upcoming episodes or something. But uh, hit me up at shags at shaggyduck.com. That is my email and uh, would love to hear from you guys. If you guys have a blog or podcast, uh, let me know about it and I will share it with everybody else. And don't forget, uh, you can listen to me also on the 70s Buzz Podcast and Buzzhead Radio Podcast with Todd Wheeler. And if you guys are watching me, uh, or if you're just listening to this on the audio, uh, there is also a video version at youtube.com slash Curtis Tucker TV. And if you're watching that, you can see that flying little bug in front of the camera. But I am here in the Shaggy Duck studio waving at you guys right here on the camera. And it is a little messy in here, but uh, I've got a big old pile of vinyl behind me. I've been buying a lot more vinyl records here lately. So uh, maybe one of these days I will do a vinyl uh, record episode once I get my collection. Oh, I think I got the bug. Uh, get my collection a little bigger. But the for today's episode, what I want to talk about is sunrises kind of a combination of sunrises and photography. And I don't really have, I've got some uh, some little numbers here that I jotted down, but I don't like really have a direction. You know, a, this definitely isn't a scripted podcast, so uh, I may ramble or get off uh, exactly where I'm going. But uh, just want to talk about how did I get into taking sunrise uh, pictures. So I'm kind of a sunrise photographer. Uh, not really professional, but uh, I have been paid for some of my sunrise uh, photographs. And so I thought I would tell you guys, how did I get into sunrise photography? And, uh, you know, what does that mean for today? So basically, uh, you know, for years and years and years, you know, going through life, I was just like pretty much probably 95 to 99% of all people, you know, you get up in the morning and you're in a hurry and you're driving around town and there's houses and trees and buildings in the way and you just really don't pay attention to the sunrises, especially if you don't live in places like Oklahoma where it's flat. But even in Oklahoma, if you're in a town, you know, you can't really see the sunrise because of, again, all the trees and buildings and houses. But every now and then you'll see some pink clouds, you know, at sunrise or sunset, and you might take a picture with, you know, a bunch of stuff in the way. And there's power lines and phone lines and, you know, just all kinds of junk in the way all the time. So I see a lot of those pictures being posted and, you know, they're just not, they're really kind of neat, but they're just not beautiful pictures. And, uh, and I never even really, you know, over the years took the time uh, to take really any pictures. And then uh, when I started Enid Buzz, uh, you know, I, I started taking more pictures because I was out and about and I was taking pictures of events and things like that and started carrying, uh, purchased and started carrying a professional camera around with me. But then I also, uh, the iPhones came along and that, that's one reason, you know, we went, you know, for most of our lives without having a uh, camera in our pocket, but once the iPhones came out, all of a sudden we've all got uh, cameras in our pocket. And so that's probably one of the reasons where, you know, I wasn't taking a lot of pictures, but uh, at the time there just wasn't a lot of opportunity. So 
So what happened was uh, I would be out like, and I kind of remember a couple of times, uh, you know, I kind of started Enid Buzz full time somewhere in 2012, 2013, and I'd be, and you know, most of the events were at night. And so I would be out at an event and I would see a really gorgeous sunset. And so I would take pictures of the sunset, you know, the really cool colors and all that. But still, even then, you know, I might be downtown or, or somewhere in town and it would be blocked a lot by buildings and stuff. But that kind of got me, you know, thinking about, oh, wow, you can take some really cool pictures of the sunrises and sunsets, not thinking a whole lot about it. But I did have in more, my portfolio of pictures, you know, some really cool sunsets. And so, uh, you know, at that time, I think I was probably uh, working out at uh, one of the local gyms. So I would go to the gym in the morning and uh, lift weights and do my aerobics. And then eventually, uh, when we moved over to actually the house that we're in now, but we moved, when we lived here the first time, uh, we kind of built a room and I put a, an elliptical and a treadmill in there. And so I was doing my uh, aerobic at home and then eventually I, I I just I decided to quit lifting a whole bunch lifting heavy weights and so I was even doing light lifting at home so I quit going to the gym and so I just wasn't out and about in the morning and uh, you know that went on for years and years and years and um, and so then somewhere about 2014 2015 um, I started taking, uh, probably 2014, even earlier, but about around 2014, I started taking, you know, I was had been taking the girls to school. So lucky enough, uh, running Shaggy Duck Studio, I opened the studio in my home, and uh, being an entrepreneur, I worked for myself, so I didn't have to go to work every day. But I did have to take the girls to school every day, which, you know, most of the mornings, you know, was somewhere around sunrise. And so I would notice that when I would take the girls to school, every now and then I would see these really cool pink clouds. And then sometimes I would see the, the sunrise coming up and I thought it was pretty cool. And I remember one morning kind of seeing the sun coming up and it was behind some clouds and the clouds were blocking part of the sun but it was letting part through and so it was one of those sunrises where you've got the sun that's just really bright but then there's these rays of, of light coming out almost like you know there's uh, you know 50 flashlights behind this cloud and so I thought wow that is really cool looking and I I realized that there was an area between the school and my house that I remembered it was kind of like this park area it was this field and it had been built up and so it was higher than the houses that were to the east of it so looking east you were actually kind of on this higher level and you could see everybody's roofs but that allowed me to be able to see the sun rise and now still there was a couple of trees that were you know pretty tall but even with the trees you could still so i would i drove into that field and I took a couple of pictures of the sunrise and I posted those uh, on social media and uh, you know people were like oh wow cool sunrise blah 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 and I didn't think a whole lot about it but I did notice that um, over the next maybe couple of months that I would stop in that same field every time that I saw a cool uh, sunrise and I would take more pictures and so I thought that was pretty cool uh, again, still not thinking a whole lot about it. And then um, I had heard that Enid had built a walking trail. You know, they'd been working on it for years and years. And um, there's different areas around Enid where they had built part of the trail. And then eventually over, you know, a decade or two, they're going to connect them all. And But they got this one stretch that was literally just a couple blocks from the house done. And I um, heard the mayor was going to be out there uh, to, you know, be, you know, one of the first ones on the trail. And so I ran over there to the trail, took the picture, took a picture of the mayor out on the trail. And it was, you know, well after sunrise, so there wasn't like any cool sky or anything. But that kind of got me out on the trail. And I thought, oh, okay, so here's the trail. This is what it looks like. Uh, there's these really cool big bridges over these creeks. and. Um, and it's like really wide trail with a dashed line in the middle. So, you know, like two uh, baby 
uh, walkers or whatever uh, can pass and you know there's bikes and and all kinds of stuff so a really cool trail and I thought wow that is pretty cool um, and then just continued on uh, working it working out at home and taking the girls to school and then I heard that they had added and then this might, this might have been even later down the line uh, in like June of 2015 I heard that they had added another mile to this trail. So basically, the trail kind of went out to this one street, which at you know some point way back in the day we thought was pretty much almost out of town. But now it went even a mile further, which was like you know it it literally is the edge of Enid. I mean, it's almost out of town. It's a, a street called Garland. And I thought, oh, wow, that's uh, kind of cool. So one morning, and I, I documented it, it was June 6th of 2015, I decided to go out on the trail that morning for my aerobic instead of uh, doing my aerobic at home. And it wasn't like early in the morning. Let's see, it was June. So let me see if I can find... Yeah, uh, in June, sunsets are really early. So by the time I got out, um, you know, the sun was up a little bit higher and there wasn't like a really cool sunrise. But so I went out and, uh, you know, I saw a turtle and, uh, you know, there was rabbits and, you know, it was just really cool, uh, you know, going along the trail. And then I got to that, that new uh, mile stretch that was really kind of far out there and it was literally just this concrete trail with these wheat fields on the side and so you you almost felt like you were like walking in the middle of a wheat field I mean it was so cool because I had never been out there before and and the stretch from that last mile and it's a little bit more than a mile because the the trail is a little curvy but uh, there's literally no houses, no buildings, no trees. It's just flat, and you can see, you know, everything from out there, uh, which is really cool because we have an Air Force base, so I can see, you can see the jets flying over, and you can see them land and take off, and you can see the geese. There's some water ponds out there, and you see the geese take off and land, and it's just, it just a really cool area, and I thought, man, this is so cool, and so I took a whole bunch of pictures, and uh, went out there and I made it all the way to the end and turned around and went back and that night you know going through the photographs I posted uh, there's a post somewhere um, I think it's just on Enid Buzz right now I don't know if I've moved all that information over to curtistucker.com the blog uh, so don't forget you guys can go to curtistucker.com and that's where uh, you can find like a companion blog to all these podcasts not all of them but uh, trying to catch up and get most of them. So, but anyway, uh, if I don't, I will eventually uh, get all of those, uh, a lot of those photos from that first day on the trail, June 6th, 2015. But what happened was I got bit by the bug of being outdoors on that trail. I mean, I was like, I thought it was, it was like the coolest thing ever. I mean, I could not believe how cool it was just being out there in the fresh air and the sunshine and the wheat field and and so the next morning uh, I got up earlier you know my normal time to work out I, I must have gone that June 6th I'm not sure what it, it might have been a weekend or I don't know it just seems like I got out a little later than what I normally do but so anyway so I, I started getting out at my normal you know earlier time and uh, started hitting the trail and from basically that day on I pretty much could never stay indoors and even today um, I rarely stay indoors uh, and do my workout now if it's if there's a torrential rain or like a heavy snow I don't go out on the trail but uh, that you know if there is a rain sometimes I'll wait you know and let the rain go by for an hour and then I'll go out if there's a snow I'll wait for it to quit snowing and then I might go out the next day and there might be a lot of snow on the ground but um, you know, I can still get out. Uh, so I don't miss that many days. And basically from that day, that June of 2015, I've gone out every morning that I can. And I, and I pretty much had to end up selling the uh, treadmill and the elliptical because I quit using them. I couldn't, I, I just, once I got out, it was almost impossible to stay indoors and to even think about staying indoors. Because it was, after all those years, it was just so boring. I wasn't even hardly going very fast and I was watching TV and news and movies and just kind of 
you know, kind of wasting my time. But so anyway, so I went out, um, I think by that time I was up to doing 90 minutes of aerobic uh, every morning. So, so what, it, what it eventually turned into is I wake up in the morning at, and don't ask all why all this, I, don't, I have no idea. It just, it just has happened that my iPhone uh, is set for 5.47 every morning so I get up and I you know get my short I mean I just literally just hop out of bed put on my shorts my running shoes uh, and then I might take a few minutes and look through some podcasts if I'm gonna listen to podcast or a playlist get all that set up uh, get my headphones and then I hit the trail you know no water no breakfast no juice nothing I mean I'm I'm literally out the door as soon as I get up and so, and then I'm 90 minutes out. And so usually I'm out on the trail by about 6.20. Uh, and then I, and you know, by the time I stop and take pictures or whatever, you know, I'm usually back uh, between 7.50 and 8 o'clock. Usually make it back by 8 o'clock pretty much every day. But uh, 90 minutes out on the trail um, over the years, you know, there's different parts of the years and different years that I've run. And then there's different years that I've walked, but... And then there's a lot of times that I'll mix, you know, I'll, and I, when I say walk, it's more, it's, it's a pretty fast walk. It's a speed walk. And so, you know, sometimes I'll speed walk for, you know, five, 10 minutes, and then I'll run for five minutes and then I'll speed walk or, or I'll just run the whole time. Or so, it, you know, it just depends on how I'm feeling. Uh, I run more in the summer and I walk fast more in the winter because in the winter I'm usually layered up with like you know, five or six. I mean, I go out if it's, you know, if it's zero degrees and the wind chill of minus five, I still go. I just, you know, I just layer up and I go out. Um, there's not a whole lot that, uh, and I don't get sick very often, so I'm going to knock on wood here. Uh, I rarely get sick, so I am I usually don't miss because I'm sick. Um, I try not to miss because of weather. Really, the only times that I miss is if I'm out of town and then if I'm out of town, a lot of times I will uh, try to go, you know, for a run or something wherever I'm at. You know, it's not always the same because then I'm, you know, in a town and I can't see sunrises, but I am at least, you know, out exercising. So anyway, but so once I got out on that trail, uh, what I noticed was uh, I could see the sunrises and I started taking more sunrise pictures. And uh, then I started posting, you know, social media became bigger and bigger, Facebook and Instagram. And, uh, and then me doing Enid Buzz, which is my community, you know, website, I started posting one of my sunrise pictures every morning. So every morning at 7.30 on Enid Buzz, I do a thing called the Buzzcast. And it basically gives the weather of the day, the holidays of the day, and uh, the sunrise, sunset, and uh, and then it's usually pretty much every morning I've got a picture of one of my sunrises, and that's kind of helped them get popular. So over the years, uh, you know, so I've been doing that basically since 2015, and so getting out. So here, here's some of the numbers for you, uh, kind of the reason that I did this episode. So, uh, so over time, so we lived in this house on Indian Drive and I fell in love with the trail, which was really weird because about a year later we decided to move. I mean, so I was only on the trail, you know, for a year and then we moved across town uh, to a, a addition called the Woodlands. But looking back at my pictures, what I was doing is I would leave the Woodlands and I would drive across town back over here and then I would do and I probably cut down my my workout to maybe an hour and 15 minutes or something because of that drive but so I so for months and months I was still doing uh, you know still going out on the trail here now over in my neighborhood there was a, a street I mean my neighborhood was a one entrance and exit only and it was a circle and I think it was a sixth of a mile so you could go around in a circle and get your workout in, but it was the woodlands. And so being the woodlands, it was completely covered in trees. So I could, I could almost never see the sunrise or the sunset from our house because there's just too many trees. So if I were to walk in that circle, it, I would have been in shade and dark the entire time. And so I thought about going out on the street. Well, it was only a two lane street at the time, heavy traffic, no sidewalk, no shoulder, 
it was just grass and, and bushes and to get to a neighborhood it was pretty dangerous and it you know with in the mornings when it was dark you know I probably wouldn't end up dying so uh, so for months and months I would drive back over to the trail and then eventually they they um, they completed a trail over on the side of the woodland side of town and it was called around a park called Crossland and it was basically a stretch that was exactly two miles a two mile circle around this huge pond and so I started so in uh, I don't even know what uh, basically somewhere in the end of 2016 or 20 probably 2016 I started going around uh, the Crossland uh, trail and like I say it was two miles exactly so I'd go around the cool thing about that was the the pond was it was almost like a small lake I mean it was pretty big and so I learned that's where I kind of learned how to take some better pictures of the sunrises and there was a lot of really cool sunrise reflections off the water so in Oklahoma in the morning I mean right before sunrise usually the water is just completely still like glass which means you can catch the sunrise reflection in the pond I mean just beautiful and then literally as soon as the sun comes up the heat causes the wind and then you get ripples and then you don't get anything but uh, just the timing of it so I got some really some of my best photographs are from uh, though the year of going around the Crossland uh, trail and uh, near that body of water then eventually they widened our street at the woodlands and it turned into a four lane but had a walking trail sidewalk on one side and a regular sidewalk on the other and so uh, eventually I was able to just walk out my back door onto the trail and so for Oh, probably 2017 to 2021 for quite a while I just walked uh, that my neighborhood so what I would do I kind of made a trail uh, in a whole bunch of uh, different neighborhoods around my neighborhood and I kind of timed it so there was this one field that they had left uh, for a water uh, retention field so if it ever flooded the neighborhood wouldn't flood all the water would go to this area and uh, so that area stayed flat now there were it was a line of trees kind of off in the distance but even with that it, you could still get really good sunrises and so that's where I was getting most of my sunrises uh, in that area for several years and then um, in 20 July of 2021 we purchased this house uh, again and moved back and now so for over a year now I've been back on what we call the Cleveland Trail and getting my old photographs from uh, like I did at the very beginning so so I've got tons of sunrise photographs you know in different locations which is pretty cool it's not all from the same exact location so uh, so basically I'm on the trail from 620 a.m. to 8 a.m. almost every day and so when you add uh, all of that up it's been over seven years I've been on the trail for seven years that is uh, uh, from the time I started till today that was 2648 days now I'm gonna say that out of that seven years I probably missed I doubt it's been 148 days but I'm just gonna let's just say 148 days so we can we can cut it down to 2500 days that I'm pretty darn sure I've been out on the trail so that's 2500 sunrises uh, since 2015 that I have witnessed and and when I'm talking sunrises I mean I'm seeing the entire thing I'm seeing pretty much you know the, it's dark and then all of a sudden you can start to see the light from the Sun and then you can see the very tip of the Sun and then the Sun comes up and it's all pink and orange and then it goes up and so just basically the the entire full sunrise um, I have seen about 2,500 of those and then what you've got to and then then you take into consideration that some of those mornings there's just not a cloud in the sky and um, you know sometimes I'm in a location where it's just just the Sun coming up and if you're not near body water there's no reflection and so I pro I did not take 
photographs every morning because some mornings they're just it just was a the sun came up in a blue sky and there just wasn't anything spectacular it would have looked exactly like every other day so but i would say probably 80 percent of the time there was something in the sky clouds or something that would make it a really cool sunrise and um, so basically in oklahoma throughout the year sunrise the earliest the sun comes up is in June at around 6.12, and the latest that it comes up is in November, and that's around 7.54. So it never comes up later than 8 a.m., and, so, and then, so that's another really cool thing is when you get out on the trail and you're seeing the sunrise every morning, it changes every single morning. Not only does the sunrise come up at a different time, only by a minute or two every day, but it also comes up in a different location. So when you're out on the trail, you know, in the summer, so you look down the trail, you know, straight east in the summer, the sun's way over on your left, which would be the north. And then in the winter, the sun's way over on your right, which would be winter. And so, so you get to capture, you know, different looks and different areas because the sun does not come up in the same spot ever you know it's always slightly either a minute later or a degree over every morning so it's it's always moving back and forth and over you know seven years it's really cool to you know you get to kind of watch and you get to see where the sun comes up so um you know so when it comes up at 6 12 you know i just barely catch it you know but that only lasts for a couple of days and then it, it starts to get later and later but uh and then um in november when it comes up at 7 54 you know i'm barely kept getting pictures then because i'm almost at home by the time it comes up but um, you know, so we'll take a few of those days off, uh, and that's where that 148, let's just say. So anyway, but when I do take pictures of the sunrise, the one thing that you may not know about uh, sunrises is there is the pre-sunrise. So, so the sun's just, you know, getting ready to show itself. That's usually when the coolest colors come out. That's when the clouds turn pink, uh, orange, and stuff like that. So you can't actually see the sun but if there's clouds out, they start to turn pink. Now this only lasts maybe five to 10 minutes, and then the pink goes away, and then the top, you get to see the top of the sun. Well, when the sun comes up in the morning, it's always bright orange bright red. I mean, it's just really colorful. And, and so you get, you know, once it starts coming up, you get, that's when you get the coolest shadows. You get really great, shadows and, and oranges in the sky and the really, really blue, deep blue color in the sky. But then, you know, maybe 15 minutes after sunrise, when the sun gets up, you know, I don't know what how many degrees up, but then it basically just turns white. Then it's just a white sun like you would see, uh, you know, just going out in the afternoon. It's just a bright sun and, and you kind of then you lose pretty much all unless there's like a really big cloud bank then if there's a really big cloud bank then you get the sun stuck behind some clouds and then you get those rays that poke out from the clouds that are really cool but the best sunrises are you know the five minutes before the sun actually comes up and then the five to ten minutes immediately after it comes up those are when you get the best shadows and the best colors and so um, so so let's so so when you're taking pictures you know normally you take a picture or two of the pink clouds uh, you know maybe even four pictures you know just depending and I'm at different areas on the trail because I'm moving the whole time and so and then sometimes if I think I might be able to get a better shot of the sunrise from a different location I'll run you know, so I can get there in time. So, so basically, there's probably at least four phases of a good sunrise. And so I would say minimum of five pictures every time I take pictures of the sunrise. So basically what I'm saying is if you, if you lop off, you know, 2,500 sunrises, let's say we're going to take off 500 sunrises because it, it was just blue and there was no clouds and nothing. So then you're talking about maybe 2,000 sunrises that I probably actually photographed, I would say at least, I take at least a minimum of five 
pictures of every sunrise. So that's around, so that's 10,000. So I have got in my uh, photo album at least 10,000 sunrise photos. And so, so basically, uh, because I post those online a lot, people have said, oh, you need to, you know, put those in something. So I've always talked about doing a coffee table book of just Enid, Oklahoma sunrises, which I hopefully, you know, it's another one of those things on my list. That will be something that I will do eventually is uh, get, uh, it'll be 365 pages. So it'll be a sunrise every day. So, you know, you can look at it and you can open up the date to October 2nd and there in that it won't be a coinciding uh, sunrise from October 2nd, but there will be, you know, I'll probably try to keep them close to what season or what month that, that I took them. But anyway, so look for that eventually, 365 different sunrises. And I've started, I mean, I've got a lot of the sunrise pictures picked out in a folder, uh, but I probably started that two years ago. So now I've got like two years worth of more photos and iPhones just keep getting better and better and I get better and better. And so I guess kind of the whole point of this was uh, getting out in the morning and checking uh, lighting and shadows and angles and putting your camera behind blades of grass and sunflowers. Uh, you you kind of learn to make, you know, get some really cool photos rather than just standing there, you know, at eye level and taking a picture of the sunrise, you know, I'll get down on the ground or, you know, I'll get behind a tree or I'll get up against a body of water. And so, so I've gotten pretty good at taking some really cool uh, sunrise photos with the iPhone. And then you've got all these filters. And the one thing that I will tell you is as good as these, I, these phones are in taking photography, they don't capture the the brilliance sometimes of the colors and so and I try not to over filter uh, I probably have on some but uh, I try to just add enough saturation back into the photo of what I feel like the photo actually looked like and so anyway uh, if you can get on curtistucker.com or I'll go to my Facebook page my Facebook page uh, Curtis Tucker uh, facebook.com uh, slash Curtis Tucker's got a lot of my sunrise photos and then a lot of them are on the Enid Buzz Facebook page as well. So you guys get on there, check those out. Uh, and again, I've probably got a collection of like 10,000 sunrise photos. So that's a big part of what I do. Uh, not only, you know, so it's all, it's such a cool deal. So number one, I get up early, it gets me out of bed. I exercise, I get to breathe, I get to go out and meditate. Um, it, it's a great time to think. I think of tons of ideas while I'm out on the trail. Um, you get a little bit of sun, you get uh, these sunrise pictures, you get exercise, you get to breathe. Uh, you know, there's regulars out on the trail, so you get to know people out on the trail. Uh, so it's just a really cool thing. I highly recommend that uh, if you're stuck in your house and you don't get out very often. Now, unfortunately, you know, a lot of towns don't have trails and then a lot of towns you know, if you're not in Oklahoma where it's flat, you know, you may not be able to see, but don't let not seeing the sunrise keep you from getting out on the trail and exercising and all of that good stuff. So anyway, just wanted to throw this episode out there and uh, kind of explain how the whole sunrise thing got started. I mean, it's actually a big part of uh, every, you know, part of my day every day. Uh, you know, I'm looking forward to tomorrow morning when I can hop up and uh, go out and and the cool thing is you just never know what the sunrise is going to be it's because it's different all the time and and then when you're out and you start taking the photos then you got to start thinking okay how can I take a photo of this sunrise that's going to be a little bit different than anything I've ever done uh, to make it look cool and you know the cool thing is you know if a flock of geese go by oh well the other day I took a picture of a calf so a calf had gotten out of one of the fences and just literally stood in the middle of the sidewalk trail. I mean, he was smack dab in the middle, and luckily he had turned with his body was blocking the whole trail, and there was this beautiful, one of those beautiful sunrises where it was past, you know, the orange color, but the sun was in the clouds and the rays were just spidering, you know, fingering out behind the clouds, and I thought, yeah, what a picture. And so I, I got up to the cow and I got down on my knee and pointed the camera up. So the cow was almost blocking 
the sun, but I had that full sunrise in the background of that cow and took probably one of my better pictures. It was, uh, it was really cool, really cool picture. So again, you just never know what situation you're going to run into out there when you're taking pictures. Um, you know, it's so cool having a camera in your pocket. And that's, you know, I've sometimes I thought, well, maybe I ought to just take my iWatch and, and, but I can't, I, you just, I can't go out in the morning without my phone because it's literally my camera and I just, I wouldn't want to be out and miss some shot, you know, I can't, you know, take a picture of an animal, you know, you just never know what you're going to take a picture of. So anyway, I am going to cut this episode off and get out of here again. I appreciate you guys. I hope you've enjoyed my little story of my sunrises and uh, my morning ventures. Uh, it's always fun and I've been trying to post more of those pictures. So you guys check out uh, Curtis Tucker on Facebook and some of my better photos that maybe are going to be in the coffee table book I'll try to put on a page on curtistucker.com. Uh, and then I've also, I'm going to do a comparison of what, you know, if you just stand there and take a picture of you know, an area by a pond that I take these pictures of just during the day, how bland and icky it is as opposed to what it looks like in the morning with that sunrise and the reflection and the colors. It's just, it's, it's just no comparison. And so I, I've got a blog post on that working. So anyway, don't forget to hit me up at shags at shaggyduck.com. Go to youtube.com slash Curtis Tucker TV. If you want to see me, I'm waving at you right now. I appreciate you guys. Please email me shags at shaggyduck.com. Tell me uh, some show ideas or things you guys would like to hear about, or tell me about your podcast or your blog so I can tell everybody else about it and uh, catch me on those other podcasts. And I will check you guys later. See ya.